Good morning, folks. Morning. Thanks for joining us today here with Adam. It's been a while since we've been yeah. together here. Yeah. It's been like a months and months. It's finally getting cold again, so this is what we have to do now. <laughs> Sit inside. <laughs> So he's got his flannel shirt on. I'm still in shorts. We're not breaking. We're not done with the shorts yet, of course. So today we got a really easy topic to oh, talk yeah. about. Should take two minutes tops. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna talk about the Trinity, and uh, you know it's kind of interesting. Uh, those are one of those words that uh, it's a churchy word. Mm -hmm. Very you know, much you don't so. you don't hear that uh, people aren't just talking about. I guess in the uh, what was the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, the Matrix, Matrix has a character. They could have called Trinity, yep. right? <laughs> that has nothing to do with this whatsoever. I, I understand the plot line of that movie about just as well. <laughs> there, so, so um, the word Trinity, you know, kind of means tri unity, three, <laughs> three unity. So we're going to look at how God reveals Himself. We went through the attributes of God yesterday, but now God. Uh, really is one God, three persons. Now that's something that none of us can really understand. Mm -hmm. It's called, what's called what we call in the church, a mystery. Um, yes. It's not a mystery in what the scripture says. It's a mystery in like, when you start saying, well, how can that possibly be? How can, uh, you can't wrap your head around it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can confess it. You can believe it because of what the scripture says, but it's, not something that I can understand in, in a human perspective. So there's all these little different things that people try to do to explain the Trinity, maybe to kids and stuff like that. And one of, sure. We had a kid's book that um, had an apple to mm -hmm. try to explain the, the Trinity. The skin of the apple, the, the flesh of the apple, and the core of the apple. But all those analogies fall apart at, at some mm -hmm. point. I remember, oh, I remember this. There was somebody... Uh, this kind of connected with me. It was a computer it was in computer science room. Mm -hmm. We were uh, explaining the Trinity in terms of a database. Okay. <laughs> so in a database, you can have um, three types of relationships: one to one, one to many, many to one, well, many to one, one to many, many to one, sure. uh, and Both and nice. many, and so. The, on all those, the Trinity, you can have all those relationships mm -hmm. within the Trinity. So, I think we've probably confused everybody at this point. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's let's dig into what the Scripture says here. So, I um, wanted to take a look at uh, Genesis 1 again, uh, and where God is doing this, his act of creation. God is all-powerful, so this is a characteristic of God. Uh, Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it kind of lays out in the rest of Genesis 1, uh, his acts of creation, as he's kind of bringing things to life, bringing to, things to uh, order out of the chaos. Because uh, at first, it's like the, the Spirit of God was, um, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the, of the deep. So out of this chaos, out of this disorder, God starts to bring order, and mm -hmm. then he brings life into that. Mm -hmm. And then in the culmination of that is uh, verse 26. Now, when we say the culmination of God's creation, we shouldn't be saying that in terms of arrogance, um, that mankind is, or the people are the culmination of God's creation. We should be saying it in terms of humility that mm -hmm. uh, we are given special care Right. You know, you know, it says the word sometimes they use dominion or stewardship. We we're stewards. God is the owner of everything. We're stewards, and mm -hmm. if we're not good caretakers of what He's He's made, we're going to be answerable to Him for sure. for that. So it says in verse twenty six, it says, "Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, etc., and over the livestock of the earth." So let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So there's a hint of something there that begins to talk about the importance of this is, is relationally. Uh, so God is relational in and of himself, and he makes us in his image, in his life and likeness to be relational as mm -hmm. well. So we're going to take a look at you know, how this, is, this hint of something kind of is unpacked further. So uh, one of the things, uh, if you could read from John, 
yeah. chapter one, like the beginning of that, uh, is very much a parallel to Genesis one, and uh, we begin to see, hey, this one God uh, is actually three persons, and we start to unpack that here. Mm -hmm. So the John uh, uh, one, yeah. in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Okay, so so there we see, this is the introduction to John's Gospel, which he's describing Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, he's saying, hey, he made everything. So God made everything. Jesus made everything. Yeah. So Jesus is God, right? So, so uh, this is starting to unpack this, and, and it's really it's a parallel to uh, the Genesis account. But then you kind of see in other places in the uh, in the New Testament how this is fleshed out more. One one of the things you see uh, hints of it in the Old Testament, and one of the things where I was talking about with Adam beforehand was when um, there was these three visitors that come to Abraham. To talk about what are they going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah mm -hmm. and then really Abraham's left standing before the Lord and it's kind of a pre-incarnate many people think a pre-incarnate uh, Jesus who's, who's there and Abraham's arguing with him hey if there's 50 righteous people would you still destroy Sodom and Gomorrah no for 50 for sake of 50 I will not what about 45? What about 40? You know, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Right. It goes back yeah. down. So uh, there we're seeing some of these hints that God um, is one God, but three persons. And then you start, start seeing this unpack some more in the New Testament. And if you look in your Bibles in Ephesians, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts and Leather, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 1, uh, this is the introduction to that letter to the church in Ephesus. Ephesians 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's like, well, God is Father and also the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on, as he's saying, talks about their calling, them being brought to, to faith, and um, really how God has worked in their life and lavished them um, with all kinds of spiritual blessings. And then it says <clears throat> in verse 13, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, also in the New Testament, there are several places, you know, some people will say, well, Jesus never said he was God. Well, I mean, you're not really reading the New Testament. Right. If you're that. So in several places, uh, Jesus talks of himself, he says in John's gospel, uh, before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. He uses the word I am, which is how God revealed himself to Moses. I am who I am. And the, the people who were listening to that clearly understood what he was saying because they're like, let's kill him. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, it, there was no, it's like, that's, no confusion, that's right. blasphemy. So uh, also in John chapter 17, which is called the high priestly prayer, he expli Jesus explicitly uh, talks about his unity with the Father. Mm -hmm. I and the Father are one. So uh, it's, it's becoming clearer and clearer. And then it also talks about in the scripture that the Father and the Son send the gift of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit is God as well. So... These things begin to be unpacked uh, in, in the New Testament. Now, so there's some explicit um, verses as well for this. And so one, one of you, you had, um, I think, some Second Corinthians. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, uh, Paul ends his letter, uh, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, which is not very ambiguous. Right. So there it is. Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, and, you know, what can you read again here? Yeah, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, yep. and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Right. So there it is. It's, a, it's He's ending his letter that way. He's explicitly talking about this mystery uh, of the Trinity. And of course, we have also Jesus when he is uh, giving the great commission to the church uh, to go into all the world, baptizing mm -hmm. them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded. Right. So, uh, Jesus is explicitly saying, hey, this is who you baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what does that like, but what does that mean for us? Uh, you know, it's like, it's just like, okay, I gotta I have to believe something that I can't really wrap my head around. Mm -hmm. is, like, is, sure. this, is this just like some sort of mental exercise? And I don't, um, I mean, it could be, and I think sometimes people get twisted out of shape and, yeah. want, and get stuck in a certain place. And they're like, okay, I, I can't really explain this, so I'm not going to believe it, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But here's, here's the comfort for me. God is relational in and of himself. Right. One God, three persons. He understands relationship in and of himself. He wants us to experience relationship in that closeness that he has there's just a, a beautiful closeness um that you know jesus is following the father he's just in total uh submission to the will of the father this relational and and the father says this is my beloved son and whom mm -hmm. i'm well pleased so this is beautiful relationship that that is there and god wants us to experience that same type of relationship let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Mm -hmm. And so part of that has to be this, that we would experience that kind of relationship with God, but also with each other. Now, obviously, things got in the way of that, but sure. this, is what, this is the beauty of what he wants to do for us, experience that same relational closeness that he has in and of himself. And he wants us to enjoy that and be a part of that. So that, to me, is something that's a personal takeaway for me. I don't mm -hmm. know, know about you. Is there is, is anything else you, you know, kind of comes to mind on the Trinity other than it's like a tough mental exercise? Yeah, and I, th I think that's the point, is that part of the, the Trinity and like so many other things about, about God, it is a mystery, and that's part of the majesty of God, is that we have a God that's bigger than us. Yeah. And... I'm not sure I would want a God I can fully wrap my head around yeah. because a lot of things I can wrap my head around are not that impressive. Yeah. Um, and so there's no chapter in here where they go into the mechanics of exactly how does this mystery work. Right. But he does say that I am for you. Yeah. I've sent my son for you and I love you. Yeah. So we have this majesty, this mystery, mysterious God that has made himself known to us and said he loves us. Yeah. So the power is for us, and that's a great thing. That yeah, that is a beautiful thing. Now, there's a lot of things that that uh, are in the scripture that I would say are mysteries. Mm -hmm. So this is one of them. The Trinity is one of them. Uh, the incarnation of Jesus <laughs> yeah. is another one. Right. True God and true man. Uh, the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. is a mystery. Uh, the the salvation is a mystery you know people want to try to explain yeah. salvation and wrap their heads around that it's like why are some saved and others aren't and, and then they want to come up with a like an explanation and they either go a free will way completely or a predestination way completely and it's like no wait a second the scripture really kind of has these both those things there in a kind of a different way mm -hmm. um now we can't really have a wrap our heads around that. It's a part of the mystery right. of, of of God. You know why why in one fam <clears throat> why in one family you know uh, is there people that believe and some that don't believe mm -hmm. and you know they had the same environment or whatever it is. It's 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 a mystery. We can't really understand mm -hmm. those things. So there's a lot of things like that in Scripture. There is a lot of things that are clear to understand. 
that I uh, haven't even come close to mastering sure. myself, like love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on that in my home with my wife. Right. <laughs> let, alone, let alone, you know, how do I do that with people? You know, like, okay, so love your neighbor. That applies to your workplace. Mm hmm are you loving your workplace for, well, I'm not going to, you know, you don't have to, perhaps answer. conditionally, you don't, but yeah, <laughs> you don't have to slander yourself. <laughs> there, so. But I mean, so these are things, the things in scripture that aren't mysteries are difficult enough for me. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. And, and the other so is, true. but the, there is a beauty in the Trinity. What we're going to do the next several days then is unpack the Trinity. Mm hmm so we're going to explicitly say, what is, what, how does the Father reveal himself? How does the Son reveal himself? How does the Holy Spirit reveal himself in the work that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit do in perfect unity? So that's, that, that's coming up in um, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week. So hope you join us for then. Um, you have any other comments you could think of? We, we pretty much crushed the Trinity, right? <laughs> yeah, I ran out of things I know pretty quickly. <laughs> Right. Yeah, we, we've reached the limit of our, our the amount of stuff that we know about the Trinity. Right. <laughs> but it is, again, I think my takeaway is beautiful, mm -hmm. relational, right. that he wants us to share with, with him. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So, uh, well, let's have a word of prayer together. <laughs> Gracious Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for your presence in our life. Thank you for your re revealing yourself to us. Uh, the beauty of your majesty, your power, the, 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 your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, your love, um, your truth, all of that. Uh, but also that you uh, are one God that has manifest in three persons, that you are truly uh, relational. You desire us to have relationship with you. So, Lord God, help us to embrace the beauty of what you, uh, who you are and what you have done for us and uh, to really press into knowing you more deeply because in mm -hmm. pressing into knowing you more deeply uh, we would see who you have created us to be so we praise you and thank you for this day and pray that you would uh, send us forth lord god with joy in our hearts to follow you the true and living god we pray in jesus mighty name amen mm -hmm. have a blessed day